welcome to the movie swatch before you die podcast this is not really a full-on podcast episode what we have here for you today is just a little bonus segment because my co-host gab here and i'm dylan i didn't say that but i'm dylan it'll say it somewhere in the description also that i'm dylan but now i'm telling you that i'm dylan so gab and i are going to talk about uh something that we feel requires revisiting and gab since you really went to bat for this do you want to tell us what we're revisiting right now so first, I just want to say that right before you hit record, I said, all right, Dylan, make this a big deal. Like it's a bonus episode. Make it a big deal. And you literally came on and we're like, yeah, we're just going to do a little something different today. It's just a little something. Oh, I'm Dylan. It's a My bonus. Dylan. Bonuses are a big deal. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. I've um, never gotten a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely not getting a bonus. Um, all right. This is a big deal. This is a this big is- deal. Huge. The biggest deal. Huge, huge. Um, We are revisiting Vampire's Kiss. And listener, let me tell you why. After I watched Vampire's Kiss uh, to talk about it on the podcast, shout out Scotty Cameron. I Scotty could Cam. not stop thinking about it. I And also, I should say, I listen to our podcast every Friday when it comes out. Um, I've listened to the Vampire's Kiss episode four times. I made my boyfriend watch it with me. I swear to God. And I laugh out loud every time. We're hilarious. Um. I I made my boyfriend watch it with me because I was like, I cannot continue to exist in a world in which I've seen this movie and you haven't because it's always in my head and I need <laughs> to be able to say that to you so you get it. So we watched it. He was also like, damn, what the fuck? Um, I can't stop thinking about it. I, I, I would willingly watch it again. And I just feel like we need to maybe, I mean, I've texted you how many times saying I can't stop thinking about this movie. I think my only disappointment Oh, and I just hit my microphone like a jackass. Hopefully you didn't hear that, listener. Maybe I cut it out. Probably not. I don't cut that. Oh, I heard it. Really? Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. I mean, that's not important. Listen. But Gab, I think my biggest surprise is that you listen to this episode four times. You listen to every episode, yet you never mail in. You don't write. <laughs> you don't comment. <laughs> All right, Grandma. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, but it is one of those movies that while I... I don't think I thought about it as much as you did, because I will tell you, I've literally gotten texts at least on like three or four different occasions where you have said to me, maybe we were wrong. Maybe we have to talk about <laughs> Vampire's Kiss again. And honestly, the fact that we've talked about Vampire's Kiss so much makes me think that like we're wrong. Yeah. Maybe we I were know. both wrong. I know. I don't know. I don't know if this is a bonus episode where we're saying that this is what we'd watch before you die. I don't know if that's what we're doing. Well, that's what we're here to 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 parse out. So listen, when I first watched that movie, as we all know, I didn't understand that he wasn't a vampire. And so for (laughs) me, for me, there was a huge plot twist that uh, when I watched it the second time and I was like waiting for Corey to be like, holy shit. He was like, yeah, no, of course he's not a vampire. (laughs) Like, obviously he got it. So, you know, I'm operating under this like kind of a strange pretense that is embarrassing. But I still think that it is so like I I agree. I think it is a comedy. I think it's a little like out of its mind. Um, It has stuck with me. We Corey and I have continued to make jokes about it. Just last night he went, A, B, C. Like, it's just. I, I I love that. And I think about it far more often than I should be. Also, yeah. the thing I ended up thinking about way more than I thought it would is just him jumping up on the, uh, jumping up on yes. the desk going, there you are. There you like, are. Yes. Um, even... I want to say that next time I lose something and find it, like <laughs> AirPods are on the couch. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like it has stuck with me. I think about him eating the cockroach. I think about him. Um, <laughs> yeah. the <boo-hoo. laughs> I think about him uh, following her into the bathroom, like the HR lack of HR department situation, all of them joking around at the, at the meeting table. I just, I think about it all the time. And I think that, I, you know, here's what I'm going to say. I I don't think that I'm, when, oh, hold on. Ooh, I'm excited. When we <laughs> talked about the concept of this podcast, one of the things that we said was that it couldn't be a movie that would be on like a Rolling Stone list of the 500 movies to watch for you or whatever. Like this, these have to be like B list picks that maybe don't get their due. And I think sometimes yeah, movies that aren't like so critically beloved, like obviously right. I think at times, you know, at times we've done ones that are fairly critically beloved. You know what I mean? Like I picked Raiders of the Lost Ark and I know eventually we're going to do Die Hard. And I don't know if it'll come out yet by the time we do air this, but you picked like Black Swan. And right. you know, those are very popular movies. Sure. But I think movies that people, when you first think of what's the greatest movie of all time, if we don't want it to be one that somebody would obviously name. 
Right. You know we're I mean? not like, doing the Godfather. Yeah, not the Godfather, not Citizen Kane. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like not the most obvious of prestige pictures. Right. So I think in our search for a movie to watch before you die, we've kind of been looking for our own like critical acclaim. And I think that's where we made a mistake. I think this is not supposed to be a movie that we decide should be on that list. I think this is a movie that is like, like we should be agreeing on movies that are just for whatever reason. Awesome. Well, and a I movie think can be bad enough that you must watch it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know right. that you and I have talked about one that we want to do an episode on at some point. Right. But yes. this almost feels like it wasn't so bad that it's good. It was like, is this good? You know, like, like, oh, is this? I, I think it's like so over the top that it's yeah. good. You know what I mean? I this just... is like, I don't know if I would call it a movie to watch before you die, but I would certainly call it a performance that must be seen. I see. And that's where I'm like, you know what? I think this is a this is a very big moment for us because I think we've been searching for something that we can as like, quote unquote, movie critics agree is is something that everyone needs to see because it is inherently good. And I think instead we should be looking for movies that are just like joyous or or that are funny or that are worth the while, worth your while. And I just think like this is going to sound really cheesy and I, I I don't mean it to, but it's like we didn't pick this movie. This movie picked us like there's <laughs> no denying this movie has has made a case for itself. And I just want to formally change my vote. I think this is a movie to watch before you die there. I said it. I definitely don't think it's inherently good. Like, you know, I don't think I'm like waiting for the movie to be inherently good, but I do think it's so over the top and it's like a performance that. You will never forget. Yeah. And I, I don't know if it's the pressure, <laughs> if it's the combative disagreement on all other movies that we seem to suggest to each other, but maybe this is the little movie that could <laughs> suggested by somebody <laughs> else. And God damn it, if this underdog has not come back and stolen our hearts away. And I think that I guess we're both amending our decision. Oh my God, it's happening. I, I mean, will I just... agree. That this is a movie to watch before you die. I mean, cue the it, applause. The balloons are falling. I've got the cake. It's very rotten by now, it's, Gab. It's been sitting here for weeks. But this, it's happening. This movie is number one, quotable. Number two, something that we continue to discuss and reference. Number three, a movie we both want to share with other people. You said on the episode, which I know because I've heard it four times, that if you're having a Halloween party and you're picking movies to watch, that this is a good one to watch. Or if anyone is remotely a fan of Nicolas Cage, I'd be like, you got to see this. Yes, yes. I even... I had to have Corey watch it. And there were times when Corey, who who is notorious for falling asleep during movies, like kind of started to drift off. And I was like, wake up. <laughs> like, well, I do like I do understand, like there are times the movie lulls. And I feel like the movie yes. is very much like an audio wave where it, like it dips and rises back up. But I feel like it never dips long enough without Nicolas Cage doing something utterly insane. <laughs> you're yes. like, what? Yes. What? Like there's and so many times where I find myself being like, what is happening? And right. like once you accept that, like, oh. I don't think they're even taking the movie seriously that you're like, no, you know what? I'm going to have fun too. (laughs) Yes. And I, I, I I just, I forgot what I was going to say, but I'm so happy. I'm, I'm just, I, I don't know. I think there is so much happening and it, it just brought me joy and it brought you joy. And And that's the most important thing, because we watch plenty of movies that brought each other nothing and no joy or even sadness and anger. But this movie Uh, brought us each intrigue and by the end of it, joy. Well, what I I wanted to say. Oh, go go ahead. ahead. I was just going to talk about what Scott with the message that Scotty sent. Go ahead. Go ahead. So Scotty made a point and uh, I, I believe this episode will be released before or maybe after i don't know but anyway scotty made a point in a in a future or past fan mail <laughs> at saying, some point in time at some point who knows point where on the space time continuum scotty cameron said something he said that um he believed or that there's a, a theory that um the therapist was fake the whole time that he was he never actually had a therapist but that she was a figment of his imagination from beginning to end and frankly i will be thinking about that for the next week 
which just made me also think is the woman that he's with in the beginning a figment of his imagination too like right. sure, she calls and leaves him a voicemail but we we don't see the thing is in this movie because i feel like it's low budget it's not like we see many scenes where so there's so many people interacting so unless i see somebody else interact with the person that we're talking about i'm like is any of it real you know what i mean yeah well and remember when i told you that there's that when they're in the nightclub nobody is is like they're all dancing but they're expressionless all the 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 people in the club mm -hmm. like maybe they're not real it is so stupid that like this is the movie that we're like do you think what do you think was the intentionality of the director meanwhile i feel like i remember saying during the episode also that the director was like i didn't even notice that he was doing an accent and it's like yeah either this guy's fucking brilliant or he's a god dang moron <laughs> you yeah. know what i mean but i can't tell which it it's I, I don't know. And I love it. I love it. It's, you know, there's another movie that we are going to do an episode on at some point, um, The Room. And I think it's probably, this is probably a, the closest comparison that you could make, but it's also so different. And I love that. Like, this is not just like another room for those of you that are familiar with The Room. This is, I, I don't even think that they exist on the same planet. I, I think each of these movies that you just named exist on their own planet, but it's not Earth. <laughs> like, <laughs> right, right. But what I'm saying is the room is nonsensical. This movie makes sense. The plot makes sense. The characters make sense. Um, like, the room I, I would say everything has... about the, like, to go back to one other thing Scotty said. Scotty was talking about the movie doesn't work without Cage, and he's absolutely right, because without Nicolas Cage, you're right. Does the plot, like, make sense? Yeah, it makes enough sense. Would it be remotely entertaining? Would it be remotely memorable? No, because if it was somebody else who's just giving a regular performance, this movie would be terrible. Yes. This is, yes. This movie hangs its hat on Nicolas Cage. Yeah. You know, I thought I hated Nicolas Cage. Uh, you know, I think maybe we need to get him on the podcast so I can issue him a formal apology. You work on that, Gab. You get Nicolas Cage onto want, the podcast. I want you to understand, I have legitimately, I'm not joking. I have thought to myself, could I get a DM through to Nicolas Cage to tell him how much I love this movie. Could I, could I find an address for his agent and send him a letter? Would he maybe write me back? Is there any way I can get in touch with this man? Because I, I just, I, I I'm, I'm, I can't believe it. I think Nicolas Cage will notoriously take any role. So if you can get through to his agent, you know, I guess if you're willing to pay for IMDb pro, to see his agent information, <laughs> you can probably find a way to contact the agent. I feel no guarantees that he will appear on this podcast. I mean, goddamn, if I'm not going to try. And I will say, I don't think this is the last Nicolas Cage movie we ever watch on here. Well, you know, I, I have a new respect for him. So, all right. Well, Dill, we did it. We agreed. And now I feel like the pressure is off. <sighs> I can't that was, believe that was it. the pressure being off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Scotty. What a pick. You know, Scotty, at first, I think we both thought you were a jackass for picking this. And it turns oh out God, we yeah. were the jackasses. We were. We were. Not the first time, won't be the last time. Um, I, I cannot express this enough. If you haven't watched this movie, do yourself a favor and watch it. You will not regret it. You won't. And for those at home keeping the list of movies to watch before you die that we have agreed upon on this podcast, you can now put one. I mean, I never, I never thought that this was going to be it, but holy shit, this is it. I thought we would just slowly descend into madness until it came to <laughs> fisticuffs. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we are, we are in agreement. And now hopefully there will be more to follow, but you know what? I will say this, the bar has now been set. So if it's not as captivating and fun and entertaining as Vampire's Kiss, then it's not a movie to watch before you die. So maybe this just made it harder. But please also suggest good movies. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like um, I still don't know if I can call it good, but it doesn't have to be good necessarily. I mean, I think I think objectively it's bad, but subjectively it's awesome. Perfectly stated. Yeah. So listen, guys, we love your requests. Please get them into us. Uh, we have a couple that we need to address um, and we absolutely will. But you can send us an email with your movie request at movies to watch before you die at gmail.com or anchor.fm slash movies to watch for your audio messages which we love um and 
again, if you find yourself finally convinced that this is a movie to watch before you die and you go ahead and watch it, please let us know your thoughts. We're desperate to know. Yeah. Or if you disagree with us on any of our current decisions or previous decisions, we want to hear about that, too. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, thank you so much for catching up on our bonus episode. Uh, We appreciate all 18 of you, which now may not make sense depending upon when this episode comes out. But um, you're great. Depending on when this episode comes out, there may be 19 of you. There may be 17 of you. (laughs) But either way, we appreciate every one of you. Yes, we do. Thanks so much, guys. Bye, everybody. I'm a vampire! 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 I'm a vampire!